you know, you have to imagine I'm wearing gloves, uh, it's minus 20 degrees, there is snow or dust or whatever. And if I would need to change glasses or take off a backpack and change lenses, change camera, I would lose a lot of time and I would probably uh, miss that perfect moment that is just there for one second. For me, it's out of question to bring big lenses and big gear uh, on these expeditions and on these trips because all the gear that I'm traveling with, I need to carry it myself. The stuff I'm doing, it's really hard to, to plan ahead because you never know what you're going to expect. As soon as Canon released the first full-frame mirrorless system, the Canon EOS R, I switched over to the R system. For me, it's important to not waste time and to be as fast as possible working in changing environments. I cannot redo a scene climbing up that icy glacier at 5,700 meters uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning, so I, can, I cannot redo the shoot. I work differently than other sports photographers maybe, because most of the time I'm working with athletes uh, that I can communicate with. I know usually where they're coming from and where they're going, and I know where I want them in the frame. Now, I can shoot fast action with a very open aperture, like 1.2, 1.5, 1.6, and I can be sure that the autofocus is attached on the athlete, even on its head. And this is something that before was simply not possible. Um, even with a fast, good sports camera, uh, like the 1DX Mark II, the autofocus performance was not even close to what it is right now with the mirrorless system. So that has been a huge change of the way I work with the camera. I had an upcoming trip to the third highest volcano in Chile. Me and I think it was four or five guys on a mountain bike. And I brought the USR with me um, and I tested it there because I didn't know how it's coping with the cold temperature, um, with the heat in the Atacama Desert. So there was quite a big range of, of temperatures we had there. And also due to the size and the weight, it was really comfortable for me to work with it. One of the biggest advantages back then was that I could use the whole frame to put my autofocus on. Canon introduced that touch and drag function where you could use your thumb on the back of the screen to move around the autofocus field. It changed quite a bit how I held my camera. Before I was holding it like uh, holding the lens and then holding the camera in this hand and afterwards I started looking more like a tourist holding the camera like this because I needed that left thumb to move around the autofocus field on the back of the screen. But that allowed me to work very quickly and move around the autofocus field all over my frame, uh, which was a huge plus over the DSLR. The way I configured the buttons on my EOS R5, um, I have set it up that way that it feels pretty much like I would hold a DSLR in my hands, like the 5D Mark IV. And uh, that was very easy for me to make the transition actually coming from the DSLR world to the mirrorless world because it felt exactly the same. So the IS system that was introduced with the R5 also helped me to reduce my gear. I usually shoot stills and film, and I do not have time to set up a tripod. When I'm working with longer lenses, the image stabilization comes in very handy because I can still shoot film and not have too shaky footage. It needs to be authentic, and if it would be like the perfect shot on a tripod and the riders would ride through, it just wouldn't work uh, with the, the story I want to tell. When I'm traveling to foreign places um, like the Himalayas or Oman or Iran or you know all the, the places that I've been, I'm trying to capture everything that's around mountain biking as well because this is kind of replaceable when you're too close on the subject. This could be anywhere. For me, it's really important that the magazines do not only get mountain biking shots, but they also want all the side shots. So markets, uh, meeting with people, overnight stays in camps, nature shots, etc., etc. So that's really important, not to focus too much on the action itself, but also to see the broad picture. You know, video has become more and more important over the last couple of years. It changed from a client's perspective because they are asking for moving images as well. Working with the EOS R5, with the film features that it has, like the super slow motion, shooting in 4K in C-Log3, I can offer them both. I use the same kit, I use the same gear, just two cameras in a very small and compact uh, format. I love to try out new stuff, uh, for example, the dual fisheye, um, the RF 5.2 lens, which allows me to shoot virtual reality. That's why I decided to bring it to the Swiss mountains. I already own an EOS R5, and all I need is, an, is a lens that I can attach um, to the R5, and now I'm able to shoot VR, so that's 
for me as, as a photographer making a living with photography, a cool way to extend my field and offer new services to, to my clients. I'm, I'm always very excited when new stuff comes out and when I see what, what, what Canon is coming up with. Is it, is it new lenses or new bodies and, and new gear? So I, I, wanna, I wanna try that out and just, uh, yeah, see, see how it uh, could improve my photography, but also to see if this could be a, a potential new field for me to offer to my clients.